I'm Ashton Addison from BlockQuest Capital for Investment Pitch Media. And today on the Crypto Coin Show, we have Elena Sinelnikova, CEO of Metis. Elena, welcome to the show and thank you for taking the time today. Thank you, Ashton, for having me. You're very welcome. Uh, let's. I would love to start off our conversation with just a little bit about your background um, in the blockchain space and how you got involved in starting Métis, and then we'll dive into everything around the protocol. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Ashton. So I came from the very centralized and the very governed structures. I came from uh, government, uh, government, government of Canada and police mm -hmm. as well. So I joined Web3 Space uh, back in 2015. And uh, that was inspired by Ethereum creation by Vitalik. Uh, and what I did first in in the space is founded uh, CryptoChicks uh, with my longtime mm -hmm. friend Vitaly Anilin. And from there, we of course got very educated, very connected. So we built our own nonprofit startup uh, with the chapters in 56 countries uh, that focusing on the women's education. And as we were working, um, like, my vision formed that I would love people in the world to know how great the blockchain space is, how open it is, how borderless it is, how inclusive. And uh, I made my mission you know, to onboard not only people, but also businesses and then mm -hmm. people through the businesses. And that's how I uh, started with Metis. Uh, I met my co-founders, uh, Kevin, uh, Liu, and Yuan Su, uh, while we were still actually collaborating on CryptoChicks and CryptoChicks uh, hatchery and the conferences. And uh, this idea of Metis becoming a decentralized platform for businesses and uh, gateway from Web 2 to Web 3 is actually captivated me and I joined Metis as a CEO back then. Incredible and great backstory. And I'm, I'm quite familiar with Crypto Chicks as well. Um, congratulations on, on founding that. And, and I think that's a great addition to you know, the women in Web3 space and, and getting more people involved in you know, the future of the internet and, and of money. So thank you for that. Um, and, and with Metis, maybe you can talk a little bit about uh, the, the solutions and, and the scaling and, and what exactly is the focus of Metis right now? Uh, yes, yeah, so we, we couldn't build, you know, this decentralized platform for economy for businesses without the proper infrastructure. So we started with building an infrastructure. At the moment, we were looking at the different layer twos, and we couldn't find the ones that would be suitable for what for our purposes. So we decided to build our own. Uh, we started from the code base of Optimism, and you know, thank you so much for that team. Uh, give, giving us the head start. Uh, we modernized uh, that, uh, changed the tech uh, in order for it to uh, suit uh, you know, the business requirements, you know, numbers, n number of transactions, the speed, the cost. Uh, so that's how we came up with the smart L2 technology, which is the evolution of the optimistic rollup. Mm -hmm. so, as you know, optimistic roll-up is the processing transactions in batches, and therefore if the transactions on Ethereum becomes faster and cheaper because the mm -hmm. cost uh, and speed basically uh, split between the transactions. So what we, we did was we went a step further. We also created a decentralized storage space, mm -hmm. which allowed us to store those transactions entering so when, before they get onto the layer uh, one, and therefore, uh, so we kind of uh, do the load of the transactions on demand. So when the verifiers need this, the full transactions, they fully can, st can be stored on layer one. Otherwise, the address of these transactions is actually stored on the uh, decentralized space. And then we also, of course, thought through all the security. So it is still decentralized, it is still secure, but it's, uh, it made uh, us uh, way cheaper than other layers too which is mm. suitable for mm, that's great to hear and i feel like there's a lot of different layer two layer two solutions that are coming out you know each with their own competitive advantages and they seem like a necessity um looking down the road you know looking through ethereum at least for the past five seven years as it's been trying to move into ethereum 2.0 proof of stake which is now successfully done 
one uh, of those stages later down the road is to solve the scalability and the transaction fees. And you know, it's um, they've changed a lot of the consensus to make it more energy efficient, but I don't think they've really solved that that scaling solution. Um, is this more of an intermediate solution in term before Ethereum fixes itself, or do you see Métis, you know, working on side Ethereum if it once it does fix the the scaling? Um, where does that fit in? Um, yeah, this is a very good question. So the layer two actually part of the Ethereum roadmap to the scalability. So without layer two, there will be no scalability on Ethereum. So mm -hmm. layer two is the way to go. So that uh, and that is that that was actually uh, announced from the day one when Ethereum started this. You know the whole uh, scaling upgrade. Uh, yes, so Ethereum will be faster, but the the the, uh, mo the fastest transactions can be achieved through the layer two, and the cheapest transactions can be achieved through the layer two. So, and that that's the way to go. So, layer two is going to stay, and they're going to probably stay forever, and maybe they you know they're going to transform to something layer layer, layer three, layer four. So that that is uh, a possibility as well. So, hmm. what Nikis is. is different about that layer two is just the means for us to get where our vision is and again I, as i said our vision is onboarding the businesses and making mm -hmm. the, the infrastructure suitable for for them to you know to run their business on chain mm -hmm. and you mentioned optimism at the beginning which i know is a great scaling solution and there's polygon and these other scaling solutions do you how do you look at the competitive landscape, so to say, of layer two solutions and, and people are looking to find faster and cheaper transactions and they're like, do I go with this competitor or this competitor? Um, and, you know, is it a cutthroat competition between layer two solutions? Uh, so from what I would last checked um, about optimism, you know, they're focusing on this a uh, huge harmony ecosystem of the developers working together towards the, the future mm. that uh, actually empowered by AI. So that's their vision of the future world. So the, the AI joined together with people and they work all on that, you know, on the solution, making the world a better place. So for us, it's, it's uh, maybe we have a, uh, more pragmatic, different focus at actually uh, the, the businesses because I, I think all the people, anyways, involved in that, you know, in the, in the global economy through mm -hmm. businesses that are run again by different people, by different organizations, and they all can be run in, in a decentralized environment. What if the problem that is ex exists for now that businesses they are quite separated from each other by the borders by the regulations, by the people living in the different places. And uh, as COVID showed that actually we can all work in the same team, doesn't matter where we are located. So mm -hmm. creating the infrastructure for businesses that will suit this globality. So you can basically employ people doesn't like regardless of where they live, whether they live, you know, in Canada and US or Africa. Mm -hmm. So, and they can work in a, environment that is transparent and that is on the blockchain and they could see all that and it's uh, you know editable ed ed editable so so building these solutions for the businesses and then onboarding them there this is uh, our route that we went to through the businesses so it's optimism went more with the you know public goods route mm. and AI route so it's it's a different so maybe we can get you know and meet at the end you know in a, in a big harmony of this new world, but yes, it's just the different ways that we get in there, it's different strategies that we're getting there. And you know, I, can, I cannot even consider ourselves the competitors because mm -hmm. all ecosystems right now, they have these different routes, different visions, different goals, how they want to get there. Mm -hmm. Maybe, uh, we, we, again, as I said, we get there at the same place uh, someday and we meet and then, yeah, we all live in harmony. <laughs> Thank you for that, Elena. I like that approach, and and I hope that you know as scaling continues to grow, and we're onboarding more businesses, uh, public goods, and institutions that, and everyone does work in harmony. And you know, speaking of institutions and you know large companies that are looking to onboard, I feel like it's especially important for those companies that have a lot of capital to have it fast and more importantly cheap. You know, because uh, obviously, if you have a lot and transaction fees. 
can be a significant amount of that, then that's going to cost you a lot more. Um, but at the same time, it, it's already there's already barriers to entry uh, on the technical side to entering into Web3 and entering into Ethereum. I could imagine that Layer 2 solutions might add a, a small bit more of complexity even on top of that. So how do you manage uh, you know, onboarding uh, companies that aren't really involved in Web3 to get onto a Layer 2 solution like Métis? Uh, yes, so uh, thank you so much for that question. Of course, the usability and of course the easiness of onboarding and uh, the um, probably easiness of them, uh, of uh, all the players being in the, on the network that we made this focus as the number one priority. For that, we are developing right now the infrastructure of decentralized autonomous companies, so DACs, how we call mm -hmm. them. So it means that uh, the company can just onboard with one click onto the network and then mm -hmm. start using tools. So maybe it, it is like made, maybe the blend between a LinkedIn and SAP, but it's mm -hmm. run on chain. Uh, but yes, mm -hmm. uh, everything the usability wise has to be done with a minimal number of clicks. Mm -hmm. And uh, also we are developing at the same time, we have the reputation power, which also becoming the Web3 identity. So that is also onboarding with wide one click with your Web3 identity. And that is going to be universal across uh, the platform and also across the blockchain. So that, that is our vision as well. The usability for businesses to onboard on one click, to hire employees, to give the tasks on employees, and then to also configure their DEC, which is decentralized autonomous company, exactly the way uh, they want. But mm -hmm. at the same time, openly working with the other decentralized autonomous companies, uh, and we can onboard there in Microsoft uh, and Ernst and Young. So all all the companies that are big companies could be onboarded into this platform, similar as the LinkedIn onboarded them on their mm -hmm. platform. So that's uh, that is our vision, and the usability is the key as well. Mm -hmm. Great to know. And as they get onboarded into the ecosystem, and you know more. DApps and, and DeFi and other applications want to connect into the Métis Layer 2. Um, how easy are you making it for those integrations and for you know, developer applications to integrate uh, in, into the protocol? Uh, yeah, already now uh, it is all like if you go to docs.metis.io, you can see all the documentations for the developers. So developers don't need our help to onboard onto Metis ecosystem. Metis ecosystem is EVM equivalent. So if you used to develop on Ethereum or other EVM compatible uh, networks, so this is uh, exactly the same. So it, the easiness of on onboarding is that, but also we have a bigger vision for all these dApps to actually provide a service to the uh, the future DAX, to the future decentralized mm -hmm. autonomous company that we onboard and then receive a profit from that. So similar as like you're developing um, mobile app or the plugin in WordPress, so they can plug in their app into the system. And then mm -hmm. once uh, people will be using it, the companies will be using it, they will receive the profit from it. That's a great analogy of, of WordPress. And I feel like they really, Took, uh, took it to the next level to be able to get everybody uh, onboarded into a website. And I feel like, you know, there's still a lot of barriers to entry uh, in, in dApps and in, in Layer 2. So that, that would be great to help the next few million people get into Web3. Absolutely, yes. Uh, you know, easiness of, onboard, of onboarding, this is something that is right now constantly be, need to be installed. Yes, and that's mm -hmm. what we And looking... You know, hopefully upwards into the next market cycle and you know into 2023. What are some of the main initiatives that Métis go is going to continue growing and, and on the roadmap? What's some of the top priorities? Uh, so first is of course developing the uh, DAX ecosystem. It means that onboarding the businesses onto the platform right now. All Web3 businesses, if you take any of the three businesses, they're already running in that decentralized model when they hired people from all over the world, they pay them in crypto. So we're already running this model. So onboarding those companies and making the first DAX. Uh, so this is our uh, is on in our roadmap and then providing uh, the applications, DAPs, the capability to provide service to this 
uh, DAX is this uh, this is also the priority and then also make uh, the the web3 identity that is suitable across the board and usable across the board so, so people can log in again with with one click without mm -hmm. you know maybe without the hurdles of this you know the private keys and uh, all that so that that is uh, also our priority and is uh, on a roadmap while we do that we are developing still our layer 2 ecosystem so all the dApps you know are coming and with the whole bunch of you know, with the TVL transactions all that but this is all happen naturally once we um, do the DAX onboarding and that is our strategy that's great to hear. I'm looking forward to, to seeing the roadmap grow out and, and would love to follow up with you on that as Matisse continues to grow. Um, now, looking forward, let's say two years from now, because crypto moves quite quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you see the future of you know, Layer 2 is positioned in Web 3 uh, two years from now? And you know, where does Matisse fit into that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, a layer choose, uh, as I said, this is the way to go for the scalable Ethereum because, yeah, yeah, transactions on Ethereum uh, will not be as cheap as, uh, like, like for, at least for the business, for uh, if you want to complete many transactions, it would not be practical, of course, because it's going to be quite, quite expensive still. Uh, so layer choose will be the way to go. Which layer two to choose? It's going to be depending of what uh, this layer two provides, mm -hmm. right? And then you know, as I said, it, it, like different scaling solution, they dif focus on the different parts. And you know, for that part, you're going to choose which layer two you go and wh where you go. If you want to just you know grow money in DeFi, you can go to one layer two, uh, or if you want to do the business you go to another one if you want to use the advantage of ai you're going to go to the third one and so on and so forth so uh up, up until probably you know i i have this uh, um, maybe bigger picture in mind that we all going to unite in one super chain at some point hopefully uh in, or not so th that is that is again it, it can be it can be two realities right so or not so and then we can pick and choose because again all the people in the world are different mm -hmm. and uh, you know having uh, your own chain for your own taste i think it's a good luxury mm -hmm. all right well um, i would love to see you know this uh theory of a super chain roll out i haven't heard that one yet so that's actually pretty cool <laughs> Um, either way, I would love to follow along with what Métis is working on. Um, for the viewers that want to you know, look into the current state of the protocol and follow along with the updates, what's the best way for the viewers to learn more? Uh, so we have uh, Métis.io. If you, if you go to metis.io, so this is our website. And we have also Telegram MetisDAO. M E T I S D A O. Uh, so that that is something that uh, you can also go and check mm -hmm. and meet out Twitter as well. So these are the three uh, the website: uh, Telegram, Meet Is Dao, and, and Twitter, Meet Is Dao. Sounds great, Elena. I will leave the links in the description box below as well to make it easy for the viewers. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show and uh, and teach us about Metis Dao and Layer Two Solutions. And let's definitely follow up in the near future. Thank you very much, Ashton. Thank you. Have an awesome day. Thank you.